Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Hope everybody's doing all right. Today, we're gonna talk about the productivity applications on the 3D Experience platform. Of course, we're not gonna talk about every single app there is, we're just gonna focus on some of the basic applications that give you base functionality, but also will make your life a little bit easier. My name is Kyle Elias. I'm an applications engineer here with Inflow Technology, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. First things to first, let's talk a little bit about our agenda. We're going to discuss what the 3D Experience platform is all about. We're going to touch on briefly on where it lives today. We're going to talk about some of the verbiage we use, some of the terms we use all the time like apps, roles, and dashboards. And of course, go through some of our productivity apps that we deem important that we think will make your life a lot easier. In the end, we'll have time for questions, but to please, if you have some in the meantime, let us know what they are. We're going to start off by talking about what 3D experience is. We're also going to talk about some questions that we get asked day in, day out as we explain the solution to different customers. Is this how it works on the cloud? And the answer to that is it can be, but it can also be much more than that. There are some apps that will mimic SolidWorks functionality on the cloud, but you can also add things like data management or project management or simulation products or even marketing solutions. So it basically grows with you as your company grows and it can be much more than just simply SolidWorks. Is it secure or reliable? This solution can be a very secure depending on your need. If security is on your mind, please let us know and we can help you with any questions you may have. We can talk about maybe putting this on a private cloud or even talk about installing the solution on a private server if security is paramount to you. Platform is also a 3D based ecosystem and uh, what we mean by that is really the platform was built from the ground up with 3D in mind. In a nutshell, all the applications are kind of tied together in the background. They're referencing the same database and they're keeping your 3D uh, files in perspective. So if you mark something up and share with somebody, you're sharing the same file again and again. So uh, it really keeps everything in perspective and uh, hopefully you'll see that as we talk about some of the apps throughout the presentation. It allows you to collaborate and innovate using design communities. Um, so those are similar to Microsoft Teams, if you guys are using that today. It allows you conversational history, allows, to post, allows you to post wikis, post ideas, talk to one another, get the attention of one another, post markups and things of that nature. It allows project management, so if you're after a tool that does project management on the cloud, we can definitely demonstrate that to you if you wish. But basically it allows you to keep track of your project from inception all the way to completion allows you to design anywhere on any device. I don't think I have to tell that to you guys, but as long as you have access to a device that has access to the internet and a browser installed on it, you can get to your cloud, you can get to your data. It also allows structural validation with Simulia. So if you guys are after simulation solutions, thermal analysis, whatever kind of simulation you need, um, we can help you with that on the cloud. And the most important part of it all is that it allows to leverage the existing SOLIDWORKS ecosystem. So if you have SOLIDWORKS as your CAD system today, you can use that and still collaborate to the cloud. And uh, many other products that are available today on your desktop can also be integrated with the cloud. So if you have questions there, we're happy to help you with it. This is another question that I get asked a lot. People really want to know where the data is being stored and the answer to that today is basically all over the world. They sell systems has data centers scattered all across the globe. But if you're a North American customer, uh, most likely your data will live on the East or West Coast servers. So just for peace of mind, this is exactly where your data will live. I want to talk about the 3D Compass next. Basically, when you click on it, it sits on the top left hand corner of the screen. It will show things like your roles. And in a nutshell, your roles are what you paid for. They are a combination of applications and each role will give you certain functionality on the cloud. Uh, right below that, there are your apps. Each application, like I said, will solve a specific problem. So some of them will do like things like a markup. Some of them allows you to create tasks. Some of them allow you to share with one another. So each app solves a different problem. And in, you know, in a 10,000 foot perspective, each role is a combination of app that will give you certain functionality on the cloud. As you log into the cloud for the first time, 
you will be uh, faced with a blank screen and this is on purpose it basically allows you maximum uh, customization and allows you to make the environment your own I usually uh, make the reference of you know, buying a new cell phone when you buy a cell phone it's up to you to go to the app store and download which apps you want to use and which ones make sense for you and uh, he here in the platform it kind of works the same way it's up to you to go to that compass and drag and drop the apps into your blank space to make this a custom solution for you that works in your specific case there's a quick example here I built a home page for us to uh, investigate a little bit in this home page we have things like our tabs and our tabs are much like swiping right or left on our phone screens it gets us to a different page which all have a different set of applications uh, on them and each one of them performs some kind of task for us and of course down the bottom here are on the center of the screen are our apps each one of them will of course perform some kind of task and I just simply dragged and dropped them from the 3d compass onto my home page to create this uh, area for myself so hopefully that gave you a good understanding of how the apps uh, tie together to the compass and how you use different tabs to create different functionality all right here we are let's dive into some of our productivity apps and understand a little bit better how they tie to themselves together how they all reference the same database and how they can all in their own way help us our help our day be a little bit more productive the first couple apps I want to talk about today are related to data storage. I want to make sure we know the differences between the two different apps that are related to that on the cloud and uh, which what each one of them do. First one being 3D Drive. This is your personal cloud storage solution. Much like Google Drive or OneDrive, it allows you to map those drives to your desktop to a folder where you can kind of sync up in the background and you kind of use it and don't even feel it. It just feels like another Windows folder but you're actually synchronizing to a cloud storage solution. The other one being 3D Space. 3D Space on the other hand is very different than 3D Drive. It is your vaulting solution. It will allow you revision control. It will allow you to use um, the maturity graphs or workflows as uh, what some of you may call it. It will allow you check in, check out capability which is reserve and unreserve and 3D experience. So it is very different than 3D Drive, just a personal drive storing personal files. 3D space is where you share content with others and of course store your company data. I do want to point out that the applications shown here in the presentation have no particular order. I just compiled the ones that add value to my day to show you what they're all about. The next one that I want to talk to you guys about is 3D Sketch and just like the name implies, this is a sketching solution. It allows you to ideate on maybe images, use that as a guide, allows you to use symmetry planes, you just kind of sketch your ideas in 3D and share that with others. I do have a quick example here and I will move to my cloud environment to show that to you guys. Let's go ahead and move to that here. Here it is, this looks like just a piece of text, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rotate things around just to show you we are in 3D. Each one of the letters is in a different plane, so that's why you see they are, as you rotate around, they kind of get out of sync. I even went as far as extruding that W there to show you that this is a 3D sketching solution. You can even go as far as adding an image, maybe sharing this with others, changing the grid, so there are some uh, input you can do here, but it's a basic ideation tool to allow you to share 3D ideas with others. Next app I want to talk to you guys about is called Issue Management. And again, like the name implies, this allows you to create and manage issues. And that can be an issue with your parts, with your manufacturing floor, or any other issue that may come up um, as you're going through your day. It can all start with an image, a simple picture, or maybe a markup, or maybe just text. Um, I do have some issues kind of set up here in the background uh, on my tenant, so let's go ahead and check that out and we'll show you what issue management is all about. Here's my tenant with the issue management application open. I'm going to double click on this miter saw blade design review issue and we'll talk a little bit about this app. Um, first thing we'll see here is a maturity graph, so things from end from draft to do to in work and in approval um, you can kind of set that up set permissions about that in the background also uh, you see the tabs here down the bottom we have the history tab it just shows you when this was in work when it was approved and by who and when it was completed the comment section 
just like the name says allows you to kind of share comments hey I reviewed this markup I've watched this this is this is not a problem it's kind of collaborating with one another on this issue specifically attachments maybe a PDF maybe a picture maybe a markup whatever is important and related to this issue can be attached here members of course who is the approver who is the owner who is the co-owner who is assigned to do this task related objects these are most likely either CAD objects or um, some other change actions or tasks related to this issue and they all stay within this uh, tab and of course your metadata so your titles your descriptions your dates who approved it and when there's a lot of metadata you can control it uh, from this issue management app and that uh, you do it all from here if you guys do have questions here just stop us at any point in time hopefully they gave you a good understanding of what the issue management application is all about next we're going to talk about uh, an app that's kind of related to issue management and it's called change action so basically everything starts with that issue right maybe somebody sent you an email maybe somebody sent you an image maybe you took an image and created that issue from that issue uh, one of you guys is going to review it and is going to approve it and it may turn into a change action so the change action allows assignees to act on those issues and maybe change your CAD parts or change a process or change a document related to that issue uh, I do have the change action application also set up in the background so I will click through that and show you some of the tabs and some of the things you can control with a change action here is my miter saw blade design review change action so remember it all started with that issue and it became this change action and here there is its own metadata that you can control there are maturity cycles so things like an approval or approved or completed and of course um, notifications and permissions go with that you can also control your members so who's a member who's a part of this change action who's going to approve it who's going to do the work your proposed changes so hey I want this CAD part to be changed because of a B and C um, those attachments and those markups that are attached to that issue can come through here and kind of be attached to this uh, to this change action in the referentials page so you can see that markup here from our issue management shows up also realize changes so once you have had a chance to work on this action and change your model making sure you're creating those revisions and getting your permissions those realized changes are going to appear here and the last tab we're going to talk about is context so if anything is in context with this maybe a markup maybe that CAD part maybe an email uh, it can all be uh, in context here in this mar in this change action and of course everything gets completed once this is approved um, through this uh, maturity cycle so those two apps go hand in hand and that's why they're uh, kind of together here in the presentation change action are most likely derived from issues they don't have to be but most likely they are since we're on the topic of issues and changes I figured let's talk about issue 3d review next basically uh, this is a viewer kind of application it allows you to view your 3d CAD that are attached or referentiated in your uh, issue management app or even in your change uh, action app in the issue 3d review we can do things like section measure share with others or even open a fresh blank CAD part and create a new issue with that part click maybe on your CAD model and create an issue with that uh, write some text about it so this app just simply allows you to view parts create issues from CAD and kind of understand your parts a little bit better maybe measure them section them where you want them to be all on the cloud next we're going to talk about collaboration for Microsoft this is basically a connector it is a separate install that allows you to keep using your legacy Microsoft Office products like Excel Word or PowerPoint but still collaborate to the cloud once you install it you will see this 3d experience tab inside of Microsoft Office products and from here you can do things like save save files lock them revision them create attributes create some metadata and share it with the cloud but still using those uh, legacy applications that you're used to today on the connector topic of course we're going to talk a little bit about the SOLIDWORKS connector 
if you guys have ever used SOLIDWORKS PDM before with SOLIDWORKS, you remember that there is an add-in that sits in the corner of SOLIDWORKS and this looks and feels the same way. Um, I'll start the video here as we kind of navigate and talk a little bit about some of the things you can do with the connector. Basically, as you can see, it sits right here in the corner of SOLIDWORKS and you can do things like save to the cloud, maybe reserve your parts, which is similar to a checkout command in SOLIDWORKS PDM. You can take control of your revisions, your metadata, you can even go as far as uh, looking for parts and adding them to your assembly right from the cloud. So it basically keeps the connection open, keeps uh, everything in one location and it allows your engineers to collaborate to the cloud but still use that legacy applications that they're used to today. Um, of course, SOLIDWORKS is not the only um, application we can tie to or we can collaborate to using this connector. If you have any other legacy CAD solutions, just talk to us. We can definitely help you with some of those connectors as well. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the matrix reader. I know it has nothing to do with the SOLIDWORKS connector, and please shoot us questions if you have any. But the matrix reader just allows you to keep track of any metrics that may be important to you. In this case, I just uploaded uh, some baseball metrics to 3D Drive, and I'm keeping track of that. Uh, with this metrics reader app so this is important because sometimes you want to keep track of you know open quotes or customer complaints or anything that may impo be important to you can uh, be graphed here with the metrics reader and it, it's a simple but effective tool in helping you keep track of some of those uh, metrics that are imp important to you moving along here with the presentation we're going to talk about our next app which is root management this app allows you to maybe mimic some of your existing workflow some existing flow of information from person a to person b allows you of course to create routes create approvals and kind of just keep track give you a visual of those workflows all within the cloud of course you can keep track of existing data add tasks to yourself add members to those routes and just kind of keep everybody in the know I'll switch back to the cloud tenant here that I have set up to show you a little bit about root management. Here's the root that I have created as an example for us. Of course, you can see the graph, which is a visual members. So who is a part of this root? Uh, who are your um, members that need access to this or need to collaborate with this? Of course, the tasks that create the root in the first place. So hey, you, this person needs to do task A, this person needs to do task B before this root is completed course content so things that are attached or related to this route can live here and all the details the metadata that keep this on track and keep everybody involved knowing what's going on it's a simple app but it does allow you to kind of keep track of your workflows and maybe customize them to one specific task that you're used to today next app we're going to talk about here is the bookmark editor and this is a very powerful app as well. I want you guys to think about creating a Windows folder and dumping everything that you own, your PDFs, your CAD, your documentation, everything into that one folder. It wouldn't be so easy to find things, would it? That's the same idea here with the cloud. As your files are loaded into 3D space, you can of course search for them, but a better way to access them is to use the bookmark editor. Here you can create bookmarks which work similarly to a Windows folder. And in that, you can save files that you want to access it um, day in, day out, and make your life a little bit easier. From the bookmark, you can go pretty much anywhere. You can create markups. You can go to SOLIDWORKS. You can create issues. So it really is your you know, beginning point or your point of contact for those files that live in 3D space. Next app here in our list is 3D Play. 3D Play is a universal viewer. So it allows you to view and understand things from the cloud without having to download any other applications. It has some simple viewing capabilities, allows you to annotate, maybe create, you know, some kind of text for a person. Hey, take a look at here, take a look at there, point an arrow to it, measure it, section it. Um, I do have one part loaded in 3D Play here in the background, and uh, let's switch to that and I'll show you what the tool is all about. Here's our miter saw assembly. Of course, I can navigate around it just like I would with any uh, other viewing tool. I could publish things to swim. So maybe I can create you know, a post to one of our communities and ask for input. I can go as far as using some of the tools here to maybe section this, annotate. So 
So create some text and uh, point an arrow to a part of this and be like, hey guys, what do you think about this? So it is a new universal viewing tool, allows you some annotation command and of course allows you to collaborate with others by publishing to those swim communities. Moving along here through our presentation, next we're going to talk about a similar tool which is called 3D Markup. Uh, much similar to 3D Play, it gives you the kind of same interface, but it has a lot more tools to allow you to mark things up and share that with others. So let's uh, revert back to the cloud here and we'll show you this tool a little bit more in detail. So in 3D Markup, we have a lot more tools and a lot more annotation commands that we can use to create and share markups with others. So in here we can do things like, of course, change our view and maybe create another slide here uh, with a different view to kind of get the right perspective that we want or the right message that we want. In our annotations tab, we can maybe create uh, some different annotations, point to a part that we want uh, to share with others. Or we can even go as far as maybe generating an issue if we see any or generating a change action. So we already talked about those a little bit. So if you click on one of those buttons, it's going to generate an issue on that issue management app. And if you click on change action, it's going to generate a change action on the change action app. Uh, on the left here, we can see some of the slides that I have created. Just kind of giving um, the person that I'm sharing this markup with an idea of why. I created this markup what's wrong specifically with this part so quick over overview here of 3d markup hopefully you guys get an idea of what the app is capable of doing the next app we're going to talk about here is called product explorer and hand in hand with that comes 3d navigate those two are usually used together and that's why they're shown together here Basically, Product Explorer is a visual bill of material kind of application. It lets you understand a certain product structure and everything underneath it. I do have this example on the cloud ready to go, so we'll revert to that and we'll click around, click around the tool and show you what it can do. Here we are. We have our Product Structure Explorer application on the left and we have our 3D Navigation application on the right. On the left, we can use the tree here to kind of navigate through the structure and understand what each component is. Once we find the component we're looking for, we, we have some commands we can give it. We can open it in SOLIDWORKS, open it in different apps, maybe focus on it using 3D Navigate, maybe understand some of its metadata. I can change the graph view as well to maybe a tree view, something uh, most of us are a little bit more used to uh, when talking about bombs. I can use some of the tools here to export this to a CSV file and understand its relationships. And on the 3D side of it, it just keeps everything in context. Allows me to kind of zoom in, zoom out, rotate this around, understand what this assembly is. And I also have some tools to section and measure things right from here. So it's a simple uh, bill of material kind of application. Allows you to go many different places and even allows you to create and share uh, this under a change action. Next application we're going to talk about is 3D Swim. So 3D Swim is our communities, much like Microsoft Teams, like I told you guys before. It allows you to create communities, uh, add members, and on those communities we can share ideas, maybe share wikis, uh, maybe just sh talk to one another. You can use the add command to kind of get somebody attention. You can do polling. You can even go as far as creating a video call if you wanted to. Our next app will be Collaborative Tasks. And this app is uh, very important to most of our customers. It allows you simple but intuitive task management. So it allows you to create maybe a task for yourself, maybe a task for someone else, get everybody involved, notified, maybe add due dates, add percent completes, even go ahead and add attachments to those tasks. So people receiving those notifications, those emails, know what that task is all about. So let's refer back to the cloud and we'll show you a quick example here. Here's our collaborative tasks app and you can see all the tasks that I have created. Some are for myself, some are for others. But I'm going to open this product engineering task here and edit it. And here you can see I have an attachment. I have maybe a priority, some percent completes, some start and end dates. Of course, who this is assigned to. And if I have 3D play uh, right along here, I can maybe drag and drop some of these components right into 3d play 
to allow me to really understand, get a full perspective of what this task is and what it is related to. So it depends on how you set the, your cloud environment up, but that's the powerful idea of these apps. It allows you to kind of have them side by side and use each one of them specifically to solve a problem for you. Once you're in 3D Play, you can you know, zoom in, in, zoom out, measure it, section it all from the cloud. You didn't have to open any other programs. The next application down here in our list is very important for most of our customers and it's called the collaborative lifecycle. This lets us know where a specific part is uh, in regards to that life cycle. So is this part I'm working on an, an, an in-work kind of scenario? Is it frozen? Is it released? And with that, of course, are permissions and approvals. So uh, let's refer back to the cloud here. I'll show you a little bit more of this application. Here is our collaborative life cycle application side by side with Bookmark Editor. All I've done is I dragged and dropped here our SW-100-400 assembly into the collaborative lifecycle app. And once I'm there, there's a number of different things I can do. I can choose to maybe open this in a different application, maybe open it in SolidWorks, open it in Markup. I can create a new revision. I can create a new branch, duplicate it. I can understand some of the metadata. I can even send this back to and work assuming I have permissions to do so. So the collaborative lifecycle it really allows us to understand where each one of our CAD parts or any other part for that matter are uh, with regards to their life cycle and allows us some command or some uh, leeway in what we can do with those parts uh, based on where they are at their life cycle. Of course we have the delete command here and uh, this pens a lot of different permissions in a lot of different situations so this part is you know, instantiate it anywhere else, it won't allow you to delete. If you don't have permission to do so, it won't allow you to delete. But this is, in a nutshell, collaborative life cycle. One thing I do want to reiterate here is that we haven't been talking about roles. These are all apps which are included with some roles. So if you want to know which role could includes which app, we can talk about that but this is mostly meant to kind of show you each application individually and what each one of them do individually. Our next application here is called Project Planning and just like the name says it allows you simple project planning on the cloud. Um, it allows you to add tasks, add users, understand your GAN charts, understand if you're on time, understand things that may be at risk and uh, really kind of keep track of your projects in one simple tool. Let's go to our cloud solution here and uh, we'll see what this tool can do for us. Here is project planning. Of course, I can understand the graphs, the visuals, you know, what are my tasks, when they are due, what's completed, what's in work. You can do the same thing here on the tasks tab. This is a little bit more structured. It allows you to see things that are attached and maybe open them in 3D Play if you wanted to. Of course, at Gantt chart comes with any project planning tool, allows you to understand your goals when they're due and if they're uh, overdue, allows you to even create projects, new projects, new milestones or tasks. Your members, I don't even have to tell you, projects need to have members, viewers, leaders, project owners, and content. So maybe you're working on a C scooter design here and you're going to have that CAD design right in this content, or maybe a PDF, or whatever is related to that project can live here. You can make that a tree view if you wanted to, but just uh, it really is a simple project planning tool that allows you to kind of keep track of your projects and don't lose a beat. The next app we're going to touch on today is called Compare, and like the name says, it lets you compare maybe two different revisions of the same part or the same assembly, or even two different assemblies or, or parts all together. It creates a nice rendering of what has changed. As you can see here, what, whatever is in orange was removed uh, from this part and I can quickly understand my change without having to open any other programs. So this is very powerful for people that just review documentation or even just want to understand that document, maybe take a snap of it, share it to a swim community and let everybody know of what has been going on with this specific part. Getting closer to the end of our presentation here, the next app we're going to talk about is 3D Search. 
Um, this is a very powerful application because it lets you search your entire database. And not only you can search for your cat documentation, maybe names of documents, you can search for what we call metadata. So in this example here, just search for my name and the database quickly found everything that has my name on it that I worked on or has my name on it somewhere somehow. This includes tasks or you know project management uh, items, issue management items. So it includes everything that lives in this database. And of course, with the search come uh, six W tags. Those are basically filters. So you can see here on the left, it allows us to search and filter our data based on a number of criteria that are available. So I can search on type, I can search on categories, I can search in who's the owner of those parts. And uh, I'm gonna revert back to the cloud here to, to do the same search on the cloud, kind of show you uh, what are my options there. Here's an example of a search. On the, t on the search bar, I typed the word SOLIDWORKS and the database quickly found everything that either has this, the word SOLIDWORKS in its name or is related to SOLIDWORKS somehow. On the left hand side, we have the six W tags. Those are basically filters. They allow you to kind of filter that data to get to a handful of results that are of importance to you. Remember when we talked about 3D spaces and collaborative spaces? I can click here on one of those and the filter will kind of drill down to data that's only in that specific collaborative space. Also, I have the option of drilling down into the type of file that I'm looking for. Is this a CAD part? Is this a document or a drawing? Uh, maybe when it was created, who's the owner, when it was modified. So there's a lot of filters that I can use and those differ and depending on what you search. And they really allow you to get to a handful of results and once you get to them, for example, if I wanted to open this drone assembly here, I can simply click on the arrow, preview it with 3D Play, understand its relationships, or maybe open it with one of the apps we just talked about today. SolidWorks, of course, you're on your desktop, 3D markup, maybe create a markup and share that to a uh, swim community, create an issue with this part, explore what it is, and remember that visual bond that Product Explorer get, gets us. So these are some of the options that you have here with the search. And of course, I can change some of the settings here. Maybe I want to see this in a list kind of format. Maybe I want to see this on a tile kind of format. Um, those are all available here. But the power and the beauty of 3D search is that you're not only um, searching on file names, for example, you can search on metadata on properties that live inside those uh, files. Getting closer to the end of our presentation here, of course we have to talk about some of our administration apps. These are only accessible by system administrators, but a quick example here on the left, you see Collaborative Spaces Control Centers. That's where your admin will control your collab spaces, who are their owners, what their permissions are, what their visibility is. On the right hand side, that's where you control most of the items related to your tenant overall. Quick example, attributes management, that's where you control all your attributes, mainly all your properties that live in SOLIDWORKS, how to map them to the cloud, make sure the cloud is taking control of them and uh, you're being able to search on them properly. Second one down is uh, content naming rules. So if you guys are after some automatic part numbering, we can add some rules to that, add some formulas to it and make sure when you check things in that they're named properly. Another example here is a maturity graph area where you control your life cycles, your maturity graphs, or some of you may know that as your workflows. There's some uh, things we can do there to kind of mimic what you're used to today. And there's a lot more here in terms of permissions and configurations. I'm not going to touch on all of them. I just wanted to show you a little bit about what the admin app and uh, how the admin will kind of use this to configure the system for the users. All right, reaching the end of our presentation here. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. We're here for them. We want to make sure we answer them properly. If we have to revert to the cloud, we can do that without a problem. I also want to mention that some of the more intricate apps we then talk about, like the simulation apps, like creating materials or even running simulations on the cloud, even some of the NetVibes apps, like uh, keeping track of marketing trends or project management apps, some of those more advanced apps were not touched on this presentation. 
just to to our constraint and time we wanted to make sure you guys know about some of this uh, simple capabilities some of the main apps that you kind of use in day out, day in day out before talking about some of the more advanced ones thank you for your time i appreciate you being here today again my name is kyle i'm an applications engineer with mflow